Rob, obviously, speaking of some of the most important film franchises in the history of movies, you can't talk about that without, at some point in the conversation, the James Bond franchise coming up. It's obviously one of the most iconic, most important, and long-term one of the most successful film franchises in history. Of course, James Bond was just in the news again because Amazon has just finalized its deal to acquire MGM, and of course, Bond is a part of MGM. And so we're going to be seeing Bond movies in the future under an Amazon banner, which is really rather interesting. Now, overall, we spoke about this, Rob. Overall, I really feel that this is a move that will be very beneficial for Amazon. And I think this move is going to be very beneficial for MGM and all the properties under them. When you look at Amazon's short but impressive track record, uh, particularly with some of their dynamite originals. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is one of the best things on TV. The Boys is utterly fantastic. Uh, Invincible was great. They have done a good job so far of, of creating a safe place for artists and creators to work, as well as bouncing out with having monetary success. They've been doing a pretty good job. But Rob, one of the people who does not share that optimistic outlook is... Huh. Uh, John Logan, who is the screenwriter for two prominent James Bond films, uh, Skyfall, which some people some people's favorite James Bond movie. And uh, what was the other one he did? I think it was uh, Spectre. 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 Spectre was the last one that he did. He's not too thrilled about it. As a matter of fact, uh, he's come flat out to say. Yeah, this sends a chill down my spine, he says. This comes to us from the folks over at IndieWire. Of course, you see the headline there. Skyfall writer worries that Amazon will destroy 007 franchise after MGM, uh, after the MGM bond, uh, after the MGM buy, he says, bond is not content. Now, it says this. John Logan, a three-time Oscar-nominated screenwriter whose credits include the Daniel Craig starring James Bond, Tentpole, Skyfall, Inspector, penned an essay for the New York Times expressing concern for the future of the 007 franchise in the wake of Amazon's purchasing of MGM. As Logan writes, with the acquisition of MGM and its movie catalog, the online retail giant bought into the James Bond franchise. When I heard this news, a chill went through me. Bond isn't just another franchise, not a Marvel or a DC. It is a family business that has been carefully nurtured and shepherded through the changing times by the Broccoli and Wilson family. He goes on to write, What happens? What happens? If a bruising corporation like Amazon begins to demand a voice in the process, Logan asks, what happens to the uh, comradeship and quality control if there's an Amazonian overlord with analytics passing every decision? What happens when focus groups report that they don't like Bond drinking martinis or killing quite so many people and that English accent's a bit alienating? So uh, so could we have more Americans in the story for marketability? Uh, it goes on. And I, then, of course, his big thing is Bond is not content, he says. He's not a mere commodity, Logan concludes. He has been a part of our lives for decades now, from Sean Connery to George Lazenby to Roger Moore to Timothy Dalton to Pierce Brosnan to Daniel Craig. We all grew up with our version of 007, so we care deeply about him. Please let 007 drink his martinis in peace. Don't shake him. Don't stir him. That comes to us from one of the James Bond uh, screenwriters. By the way, Er mm, writes in a super chat badge. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, Rob, there's, there's several things to unpack here, but I'm going to say something unpopular. Uh oh, this guy's office rocker. Dude, I, I appreciate you're a great screenwriter. Clearly three times Academy Award nominated screenwriter, but this is, what do you say? Every single thing he said, Rob was a hypothetical Worst case scenario of a slippery slope. Nothing he's, he, he doesn't say one thing that's tangible. That's my problem with that. Look, I, I don't have any problem with him expressing his opinion. That's fine. But if he's going to write, sit down and write an op-ed piece for the New York Times, I think it was the New York Times that he did for. Yeah. If he's going to sit there. Now, look, often when celebrities or whatever get asked a question and they answer it, I don't, I don't think we should take too seriously. They, somebody's put on the spot. This guy actually sat down and wrote an op-ed piece for the New York times. And my big problem with it is this, 
None of, every one of his concerns, Rob, he bases on a hypothetical situation that may never happen. Like not once in this article does he say, for example, look at how Amazon did this. Therefore, I'm concerned. It was all, what happens if Amazon conducts a marketing study and that marketing group says, we don't want James Bond drinking martinis. <gasps> They're going to take martinis away from James Bond. Nobody said that. That's a totally made up hypothetical situation that I do just pulled out of his ass. And I got news for him. James Bond is content. You can say all you want. James Bond isn't content. Yes, he is. He's absolutely content. And guess what? That content paid you a great writer salary. You know why? Because it's content. It's great content. It's legendary content. It's iconic content. But content it is. Just like Star Wars is beloved for generations. Well, all that is true. But guess what? Star Wars is still content. And it is a franchise. You can say this isn't a franchise. This isn't Marvel. This isn't DC. You're damn right it is. It absolutely is. Now, I get it. Bond has a special place in his heart. I get that. And that's great. And I appreciate that very, very much. All of us, Rob, have movies and characters and stories and TV shows that are near and dear to us. Some for generations, like a Star Wars. Maybe some more recent, like a Pokemon. I don't know. I'm just pulling names out of my ass. So I get what he's saying. And listen, bad things might come. It's totally possible that bad things could potentially come out of this Amazon acquiring MGM when it comes to James Bond. But if you're going to sit down and write an entire op-ed piece for the New York Times, at least point me to something concrete that shows me a basis for your concern. Now, you can say, uh, you know, you got that Susie girl to babysit Junior. What happens if Susie is an alien creature that feeds on human flesh? Well... Well, you know, that would be bad news, Rob. Well, wait a minute. No, point me to something tangible that Susie's actually done to cause me concern. I don't know. So I get what he's saying. I do. I understand concern. I do. Um, I think if, you know, take one of my favorite franchises. I don't know if, if Star Wars was suddenly taken over by Polly Shore. Would I be concerned? Sure. But I, I don't know. I see. I think it's a bit of a stretch at this point. Anyway, Rob. You, out of the two of us, are the bigger, much bigger James Bond aficionado. You read his words. Uh, you saw what he was saying. How do you respond to it? Well, John, if the as a lifelong James Bond fan, and I say this with all the love in my heart, uh, if the James Bond franchise had put out 24 perfect films that were beyond reproach, I would say maybe he has a point. But... The James Bond franchise is spotty at best. As much as I love them and I love all the James Bond movies, it's not exactly a, a, a pantheon of movies that people can point to and go, all of those movies were great. Because they weren't. Some were much better than others. And in terms of movies that we can say are really classic, like obviously people love Casino Royale and Skyfall, but before that, how many years do you have to go back before you have films that, are beloved. I mean, I, I really liked golden eye and living daylights, but that was 95 and 87 respectively. So the James Bond franchise, while I love it has been spotty in terms of quality. And, uh, the last bond film specter, uh, was, was, is my cure for insomnia, John. <laughs> and that's one that John Logan wrote. And, um, it gives me no pleasure not to love a James Bond movie, but I, they're, I don't love them all. And I think that if Amazon, uh, they, it, it's in their best interests to make sure that the Bond franchise stays healthy. And like I've talked about things like, wouldn't it be interesting to go back and readapt all of Fleming's original novels as season long stories, like 10 episode miniseries that are set in the time that they were written, like the fifties and sixties, make them period pieces. That would be an interesting way to go, you know? And and it could be very, very cool. There's a lot of things you could do. I wanted them to do a, a mini series about the rise of Spectre, the 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 Bond's nemesis organization, you know, that bent on world domination and all that. There's a lot of things that you could do with the Bond franchise that would be cool in the hands of Amazon. And I'm not worried that they're going to take martinis away from James Bond. I'm not worried that they're going to like gender swap him or suddenly have him come out as. I don't know, trans or something. I'm not worried about that. 
I don't, although that could be interesting if the story is well, uh, good enough. But the, the, um, I'm not worried about any of that. I think that good stories, well told, uh, are, are in Amazon's best interests. I don't think they're going to come in and smash the franchise with a, with a battering ram and destroy everything that James Bond is. They don't want to do that. It's one of the crown jewels of their acquisition with MGM. So they're going to want to make sure that the Bond franchise stays as healthy as ever. And hopefully the film series with Die Another Day, or no, I always say that, No Time to Die, uh, is, is going to be one of the best Bonds we've ever seen. That's what I hope for. So John Logan, remember, I love you. You wrote Gladiator, but you also wrote Star Trek Nemesis. Just reminding, <laughs> reminding you. Well, and I was I want to say this too. I I appreciate when one of the creatives, in this case, one of the Bond screenwriters, I appreciate that he clearly doesn't look at James Bond as just another paycheck that he got. Right. He is sure. clearly emotionally connected. He's emotionally invested in the character, invested in the property. And you know what? While I may disagree with a lot of things that he wrote in that in that op-ed piece i gotta say at least as a fan i can sit back and say you know what i at least appreciate that the dude is emotionally invested in this stuff that he's creating and i think that's a good thing so kudos to him for that even if i disagree with all of his hypothetical you know uh panic inducing kind of things what happens if amazon says you know what james bond should wear a bra on the outside of his clothes for no reason Okay, anyway, there's just that. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about the article? I appreciate it when a creator gets emotionally invested in the stuff, although I do, I don't, there's no point in trying to press panic buttons for for created situations that you just made up in hypothetical situations. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. What do you guys think about that? Jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Okay, guys.